The hatch command will draw a filled in or enclosed area or selected objects with a hatch pattern, a solid fill or a gradient fill. Let's take a look at the hatch example CAD file. Now here we have some shapes with a lot of different closed areas, a hatch pattern already created, and a simple rectangle and circle. Now to start the hatch command, you can get to it several different ways. Type in the word hatch, type in the letter H, go to the home tab on the ribbon, and come up to the hatch command right here. Now you'll see here there's a little arrow. And we have three different types of hatches. We have hatch, gradient, and then we have a boundary. Now the boundary doesn't create a hatch, it just creates a boundary that's very similar to a hatch boundary. And they're created almost identical. So that's why it's grouped here. If you click the hatch command, this will give you a contextual ribbon tab. This is the hatch creation ribbon tab. Here you can pick your different patterns. You can see them on the screen here. You can scroll through them. If you click that arrow here, that shows you everything that's available to you. You get to some of your gradient fills and other patterns. Some of these are AutoCAD or ISO standards. Others are typical drafting standard type hatch patterns that show material, etc. And you also have a solid fill pattern here as well. So you pick your pattern and you can define what area gets hatched in one of two ways. One, you just pick your points and it looks for a boundary and it fills everything inside that boundary. As you move your cursor over one of these areas, it will give you a preview of what's going to be hatched and what it's going to look like. Or you can use the select option and select the entire rectangle. And you see here, it automatically created this with island detection because I started it and went back to it and continued with it and it thought I was giving it multiple options. So if I press escape, select the hatch, right click and erase that, I'll show you how it's going to look. Start the hatch command, start with the select option and pick the rectangle. It will ignore the lines inside there. Otherwise, if you use the pick points, it has what's called island detection. So it's sort of dropping in a drop of water and it just flows around until it finds a border and then it stops. Now hatches are cool because I can edit them in a lot of different ways. I can trim them, start the trim command, select the cutting edge that you're going to use, press enter, and then select the part of the hatch that you want to go away. <laughs> That's really cool. Also, if I select the hatch, I can move them like so. And you can see here I have grips that I can also change the boundaries just like I would with a polyline. So I have a lot of different options. If I select a hatch object, the contextual ribbon tab of the hatch editor will come up. It looks almost identical to the hatch creation. Here I can change my patterns and even change it here as well to a solid, a gradient, or a user defined. I can change my colors, I can change a background color, I can change the angle, I have the slider bar, or I can just type in the angle here. I can make the hatch a little transparent, and I can change the scale. When you're done, press escape. If you press enter, you're going to get that little menu bar, and just press escape. So you can see here, you can make your hatch patterns look really quite cool. Now if I select this here, and I change it from a pattern, and I go to a solid, it will retain some of these other settings, but then I can just change the color to whatever it is I want it to be. And again, the sides and everything just edit the exact same way. If I switch it to a gradient fill, I have these different options here, and I can change the color of my gradient, and change the different styles of gradients, and there's a lot that I can do with that. I can change the origin, and I can use a match properties. If I choose the match properties option, I'll find another hatch pattern, select it, my new hatch pattern that I'm creating or editing will match the exact same properties of that hatch object itself. 
So if I go with the hatch command and I pick select, I can select an entire border like that, or I can select a defined shape of items. Now it's going to give you some trouble if those shapes don't break and cut exactly to themselves, as you can see here. So now that I have those lines, and I start my hatch command, I can pick these very specific lines and hatch just that object or item that way. So how a hatch object is created it depends on what you select or if you just pick an internal point, look out for island detection, that sort of thing. So hatches are really cool. They can really enhance your drawing visually, and there's a lot that you can do with them to edit them and to make them just amazing.